o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and uh, begin. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Commission on Disability Issues meeting. And uh, let's start uh, with roll call, and we'll start to my left with you, Larry. Larry Keeler, Commissioner. Debbie Poster, Commissioner. Elizabeth Nelson, City Council. Hi, I am Zach Damon. I'm the Chairman on the Commission for Disability Issues. I'm Kristen Harrison, Commissioner. Tim Hall, Commissioner. Corey Ferris from HR. All right. Welcome, everyone. Uh, the second uh, order on the agenda is the approval of the January 16th uh, meeting minutes. Now, of course, these were uh, emailed out uh, this morning. So for those of you that did not have an opportunity uh, to read them, I'd like to take a couple of minutes to do that. And if there are any edits or revisions uh, or anything that needs to be corrected, uh, please let us know uh, during this time. So we'll just take a few minutes to review the minutes. So we've taken a couple of minutes to review uh, the meeting minutes uh, from the January 16th meeting. Um, is there uh, a motion to approve uh, the meeting minutes, I guess? I'll move to approve. All right. Larry I'll second it. All right. And we have a second. Uh, all in favor of approving uh, the January 16th meeting minutes? Aye. 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 Okay. Great. Moving forward. Uh, next, we have the approval of the agenda for today. Uh, hopefully, all of you have gotten a copy of that. Um, I do apologize for the lag uh, in getting that, but uh, hopefully that will not happen uh, moving forward. So we can all just take a couple of minutes uh, to review that. And uh, really quick, I would like to uh, say that Sophie could not make it today uh, for the uh, Ann Arbor Center for Independent Living. So uh, may I ask, who uh, the new representative is today? Oh. Uh, Shannon Clark. Shannon yeah. Clark. Thank yes. you. I will uh, make sure that we get your name uh, in there, Shannon. Thank you. All right. Now, did everyone get a copy of the agenda just to make sure? Yeah. Okay. Welcome, Matthew. Did you get one? Yes, thank okay. you. Sorry for my tardiness. No, no, you're okay. All right. All right, is there a motion to approve the agenda today? All right, I guess. Uh, so moved. All right, so moved. And uh, I will second that. So all in favor of approving the agenda for today? Uh, aye. Aye. Okay, aye. great. Aye. All right, we'll go ahead and move forward. And let's go to Katie Monkevitz of the Washtenaw Library for the Blind and Physically Disabled. Welcome, Katie. Hopefully you're staying warm. I'm definitely staying warm. It was <laughs> a bit of a chilly walk here, but now I'm fine. Thank you for having me. I'm just going to pass out our February events for sure real quick. got a couple of things um, coming up this end of the month um, that I want to highlight for you. The first one is movement-based learning with Brain Gym on Friday, February 22nd. This event will be held in our downtown library multipurpose room at both 9.30 and 10.30 that morning. Um, I've actually participated in one of these brain gym workshops before and I thought it was really great. Just ways to um, make small movements, activate your brain, some things to do in the middle of the day when you hit that lull, just to get sort of reactivated. Um, Katie Held is a licensed brain gym instructor. 
She's going to come teach us about little movements that we can do to promote learning, relaxation, and balance. So in, join us if you want to learn how to engage your brain. Um, the next event is Soap Making 101. That will be on Saturday, February 23rd from 3 to 5 p.m. in the Downtown Library Multipurpose Room. We're going to be learning about the basics of soap making by watching a live demonstration from start to finish led by local soap maker Stephanie Hawks. <coughs> During the demonstration, we'll learn about various ingredients that you can use in soap, uh, natural ingredients, man-made colorants, all sorts of different things. Uh, we're going to talk about safety in soap making. And at the end of the workshop, everyone will leave with their own piece of spring-inspired soap. So that could be fun. And then on Tuesday, February 26th from 7 to 8.30 p.m. at our Westgate branch in the West Side Room, we're going to be talking about farms in open space preserving rural Washtenaw County. We're going to have a panel of experts from Washtenaw County government agencies and nonprofits discuss what we can do to preserve farmland, forests, open space, and natural areas in Washtenaw County. We're going to talk about what efforts are already underway and how we can expand those efforts. The panel is going to include members from the Mindful Eating team of the Ann Arbor Unitarian Universalist Congregation, the Park Planning and Natural Areas Planning Department of Washtenaw County, members of the Legacy Land Conservancy, local farmers, and Argus Farm Shop Stop. So that should be pretty interesting. Looking forward to that. So got a couple of books that I'm going to highlight for you today. This first one is called Lucky Broken Girl. It's by Ruth Bihar, and she's actually a semi-local artist, I know she, or local author. She's from Michigan. Um, I picked this book up because the Ypsilanti District Library is featuring it in their Family Reads program, and I did not expect to like it. I really liked this book. It's it's meant for grades five to eight, which is probably why I expected not to like it, because I usually don't like books for that age group, but I thought it was really excellent, so let me tell you about it. It's a coming of age story based on events from the author's childhood. As a young Jewish girl immigrating to New York City from Castro's Cuba in the 1960s, Ruthie can speak Yiddish and Spanish. She's placed in the remedial class at school to learn English, but she and her Indian friend are promoted out together. Things in America are looking up for the Bihar family until a horrible car accident leaves Ruthie in a body cast with a broken leg. So how can a bedridden girl who must use a bedpan and eat lightly to avoid outgrowing her cast be considered luck lucky? Combined to her bed, Ruthie learns to cherish personal relationships with her family, teacher, friends, and neighbors. She learns that reading can take the reader to unimagined places and emotions. Bihar reads this novel expressively, giving personality to the story's many characters. And I took that description from the audiobook, so audio is also available, as usual, for all of the titles that I pick. Um, the second one, I thought I'd stick with the theme of different age groups than I usually present to y'all. So this is called Your Welcome Universe, and this is a teen book. It is by Whitney Gardner. And when Julia finds a slur about her best friend scrawled across the back of the Kingston School for the Deaf, she covers it up with a beautiful, albeit illegal, graffiti mural. <laughs> Her supposed best friend snitches, the principal expels her, and her two mothers set Julia up with a one-way ticket to mainstream school in the suburbs where she's treated like an outcast as the only deaf student. The last thing she has left is her art, and not even Banksy himself could convince her to give that up. Out in the burbs, Julia paints anywhere she can, eager to claim some turf of her own. But Julia soon learns that she might not be the only vandal in town. Someone is adding to her tags, making them better, showing offhand, offhandedly showing Julia up in the process. She expected her art might get painted over by cops, but she never imagined getting dragged into a full-blown graffiti war. Wow. There you go. And then the last one that I'm going to tell you about is an adult biography. It's called Crashing Through, a true story of risk, adventure, and the man who dared to see. It's by Robert Curson. And it, it is this, it's not a biography, so it's a, yes, biography, not an autobiography. So it's not by the guy who the story is about, but the story is about Mike May, 
who spent his life crashing through. He was blinded at age three. He defied expectations by breaking world records in downhill speed skating, oh, there you go. speed skiing, excuse me, joining the CIA and becoming a successful inventor, entrepreneur, and family man. He had never yearned for vision. Then, in 1999, a chance encounter brought startling news. A revolutionary stem cell transplant surgery could restore May's vision. It would allow him to drive, to read, to see his children's faces. But the procedure was filled with gambles, some of them deadly, others beyond May's wildest dreams. Crashing Through is a journey of suspense, daring, romance, and insight into the mysteries of vision and the brain. All right, and finally, I would encourage everybody to contact us if you have any questions or you need anything. The Washtenaw Library for the Blind and Physically Disabled at the Ann Arbor District Library. We can be reached by email at wlbpd at aadl.org, phone 734-327-4224, and you can visit our website at wlbpd.aadl.org. You're never done being a kid, Katie. What's that? <laughs> I said you're never done being a kid. Some of those, he, he, some of those five days oh, yeah, are, are really good Sometimes reads. Sometimes you just want to read something all <laughs> day. All right. Any questions? Are those lists of the books that you have that you talk about? Are they in the? Are they listed somewhere for we us to go back to? I do send an email out prior to the meeting that has links to each of these titles. I'm not exactly sure where that email ends up, but. Um, you could probably get access that way. I can find them all on BARD for you, too. Yeah, and that's the thing. I never pick anything that's not available on BARD. So they're, they're all going to be available for download online as well. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, any other Anybody questions else? for Katie? All right, all right. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you, Katie. All right, next we have Shannon Clark, who's actually stepping in for Sophie. Uh, with the Ann Arbor Center for Independent Living. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so I'll say all of our contact information at the end. Um, so the first event, I'm going to go through some special events and groups that we have. Um, the first event is um, put on by the uh, Fantastic Youth Council, um, and that is the Winter Wonderland, which is on uh, this Saturday, February 23rd, um, from 1.30 to 5. And that is to uh, join your friends at the CIL for a night of winter fun, be comfy in your pajamas while you sip hot, hot cocoa, <laughs> play games, watch movies, more. Um, please RSVP to Anna Deucebeber. Um Her email is Anna at aacil.org. And um, I'll say our phone number at the end, but her extension is 17. Um, and next, we have uh, free open gym hours. This is ongoing, um, and uh, orientation is required to participate uh, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, to schedule an orientation, you can contact us. Um, and once you um, do orientation, it's a completely free gym. Uh, we have our moving into support groups. We have a hearing loss association support group, and that means monthly on the second Monday of from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m., and that contact is outside of us. You can contact Pam McGinty at Pam C, so it's P-A-M-C as in cat, 86 at gmail.com. Uh, we have our MS multiple sclerosis support group, and that meets every Monday from 7 to 8.30. And um, she suggests that you give her a call beforehand. You can contact Jody Slowens at, and that's outside of us too, 734-663-0785. Uh, we have our general support group that meets every Wednesday from 12 to 1. And if you're interested in that, you can um, please email Jason Jones at jjones5parad, so that's jjones5perad at icloud.com. Uh, we have Diversibility Theater that meets every Wednesday from 5 to 7. That's a really fun um, theater group that does theater games for an hour, and um, then they do um, they have a meal together for an hour. And if you have any questions, you can contact Chris Beatty, and that's at Beatty, B-A-T-Y-M-O-H-N, 
at yahoo.com. Uh, we also have drop-in art um, Monday, Thursday, and Friday from 1 to 3. Um, and you can contact us for any further questions on that. Um, and then two really awesome workshops that we have going on um, coming up are, um, the first one is the Personal Action Towards Health, the PATH um, workshop. And um, the description of that is um, helping you take charge of your health. Uh, the Personal Action Towards Health is designed to provide skills and tools to help people living with long-term health problems live a healthier life. It's fun, interactive, six-week workshop led by certified leaders. This workshop is accessible to all regardless of disability. Um, this is a, uh, a full six-week workshop, so new participants are unable to join after the second week. Um, and that's going to be starting February 27th, and then um, we'll go on March 6th, 13th, 20th, 27th, until April 3rd. And to register for that, you can contact uh, PATH programs, so P-A-T-H programs, with an S, at nkfm.org, um, or you can call them at 734-222-9800, that's 734-222-9800. And our last uh, workshop that we have going on is the Powerful Tools for Caregivers. Um, and the description of that is, um, Powerful Tools for Caregivers is de designed to help caregivers take care of themselves while caring for a relative or a friend. Uh, you will benefit from this class whether you are helping a parent, spouse, friend, someone who lives at home, in a nursing home, or even across the country. Um, this is also a, a full six-week workshop, so new participants cannot join after week two. Um, that's also taking place at the CIL, um, Wednesdays, um, 5.30 to 7.30, also six sessions starting February 27th and ending April 3rd, um, and it is the same contact um, as the PATH programs. So it's PATH programs at nkfm.org, um, or you can call them at 734-222-9800. And that uh, PATH program, I don't think I mentioned, is also at the CIL happening from 5.30 to um, 8 p.m. on the dates that I listed on Wednesdays. So um, our general contact information is um, you can call us at 734-971-0277 um, or you can email us some general questions at info at aacil.org. Um, or you can go to our website and catch anything that we have going on, annarborcil.org. And that's about it. Thank you so much, Shannon. Uh, yes. Any questions uh, for Shannon at this time? No. All right. Well, All right, Shannon, I just want to say thank you, and yeah. thank you to the staff for the Ann Arbor Center for Independent Living. I think the PATH uh, program, as well as the caregivers uh, uh, workshops that you are offering are great and hopefully people can take advantage of those. I hope so too. All right. Thank, thank you, you so much. All right. Next on the agenda we have public comments and of course that's limited to eight minutes and you know I wanted to confer with my vice chair on this. We have quite a bit of people sitting uh, in the audience. Should we have them come up and introduce themselves? I think that'd be all, an awesome idea. I think so. And if they can tell us what ward they live in and if they're from Huron, they get extra credit. <laughs> I haven't confirmed that with your teacher yet, but. <laughs> there we go. Well, ladies, would you mind uh, stepping up, please? Typically, the protocol when addressing anyone um, in City Hall is to state your name and your address. And perhaps what high school you go to, too. Okay. My name is Casey Chung. Sorry, I go to Skyline. <laughs> I go to Huron. What is your address? My house address? You can skip that part. Yeah, you don't just, have to just, do that. Yeah, forget about the address. Just your name and your high school. Okay. <laughs> I'm Christine Yan. I also go to Skyline. Not Huron, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I'm Allison Hawk. I also go to Skyline as well. 
I'm Madison Dininger, and I go to Skyline, too. <laughs> I'm Maddie Frutig, and I go to Skyline. I'm Shane Tracy, and I go to Skyline. Wow, a lot of, lot of Skyline Eagles in the house today. Yeah. today. See, I think, they should get, I think they should get extra credit, Sally. I live near Skyline. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank all you I have so to much. say is they're all from Skyline O-Rats. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I'm, I'm a pioneer alum myself. The so. thinker. That was a good joke. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That that's was a good, a good joke. Um, well, thank you so much, ladies, for introducing yourselves, and thank you for being here. We do appreciate it. Is this a required assignment of some kind? <laughs> ah, see. Try, try that again with more enthusiasm. Say, yeah! <laughs> no, but thank you so much, and uh, we're glad you're here. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So moving on, we have, uh, under old business, we have the city personnel report and Mr. Corey Ferris. Uh, nothing to report at this time. Okay. Exactly. Thank you, Corey. All right, now for the fun part, uh, we have the chair report. So I will go ahead. Uh, we have a couple of announcements, and uh, I wanted to know, Vice Chair Sally, would you like to make that announcement, or I can? Uh, um, make it? There, I can make it if you like, just because I have a second one that is very similar. I just found out about it. Okay. This is about the public meetings, correct? Oh, yep. So That's the correct. Ann Arbor Commission on Disability Issues has been invited to a couple of um, meetings. One is the Universal Design and Access Improvements to the Argo Canal Livery. And um, that meeting um, is Thursday, February 21st at 7 p.m. at Northside Elementary School. That would be tomorrow evening. Um, and then again, that's to design, to, to talk about universal access and design of the Argo Canal Livery. The other meeting um, is on Tuesday, February 26th at Forsyth Middle School. And that is to discuss the Bandemir Berm opening so there's a connection that is going to connect the B2B trail and hopefully the tree line trail in Ann Arbor, which is another project that I happen to be working on, to here on River Drive. So we have what's called the Iron Bell Trail. It's, it's throughout the state of Michigan. It starts on Belle Isle and ends up in Iron, Mar Iron Mountain, Michigan. Oh, good God. And it's a connection of um, bike lanes and pedestrian pathways. Um, this is sort of a very critical underground passage. It's going to go underneath the railroad tracks, and it is one of the last pieces that's going to help connect um, the entire components of the existing trail. There's still parts of the trail that haven't been built, but sure. amongst the parts that have been built, built throughout Washtenaw County, this is a, a critical intersection, and it's critical for the tree line mm -hmm. as well because we want to connect to the B2B and then connect throughout and beyond. Yeah. So. Um, those are two public meetings, again, um, one tomorrow night about the canoe livery and universal access, and that is at 7.30 at Northside, is that what I said? Yep. And then 6.30 p.m. on February 26th <coughs> at um, Forsyth. Forsyth Middle School, and that's the, the Bandemir Berm one. Uh, ju just a quick correction, uh, Thursday, February 21st for the canoe livery, it will be at 7 p.m. 7 p.m., yep. got it. I was yep. going back and forth. So. No, that's okay. All right. So I have those two and one. Great. And Thank you. No problem. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce, we have a, a new commissioner uh, that is going to be joining us. Uh, her name, Christiana Allen Pipkin. Um, so I don't know, uh, is Christiana in attendance today? Apparently she was voted in yesterday. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, uh, yeah. hopefully, Christiana, when you have an opportunity uh, to join us, we can uh, formally introduce you, but welcome. Uh, to the commission. All right. She sure slipped by. <laughs> no, she did. No problem. Um, Nobody slips by me. That's right. That's <laughs> right, her. Larry. All right. <laughs> next, next we have the uh, Community Engagement Committee. Uh, nothing new to report at this time. We have been talking about the bird scooters. Um, we have an upcoming meeting on uh, next Tuesday, uh, the 26th at 5.15, so we'll have more to report from there. All right, thank you so much. You. Okay, next uh, is an update. 
um, for Ann Arbor Inclusive. I was sent that um, via Linda Evans, so I will be brief, but also uh, update you on Ann Arbor Inclusive. Uh, for those in attendance that don't know uh, what Ann Arbor Inclusive is, it's a show uh, for and about people with disabilities created by the Commission on Disability Issues. And the show highlights uh, positive and inclusive experiences of a person with a disability and also an organization that provides services that help a person with a disability and their family to live a full and fulfilling life. Now, uh, Tom Holtland was actually named the new host and has been doing a fantastic job. And he's been uh, interviewing a broad spectrum of people and organizations. And recently they had guests uh, Dick, Car Dick Carlisle with Best Buddies, Daniel Patrick with the Fisher House, Paula Finnegan from the Center for Independent Living, uh, talking about their youth adult employment education program, and Judy Gardner with the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Now, all of these shows can be found on CTN's YouTube channel. And new shows originally air on the third Friday of each month at 4.30 on Comcast Channel 19. So thank you uh, to Tom Holtland and to Linda Evans for doing a phenomenal job with that. And they are in the fourth season and going strong. Can I follow on a comment? Sure. Um, just with regard to Best Buddies and Dick Carlisle, he was a guest on Ann Arbor Inclusive and he's also been a guest at one of our meetings and presented um, the Best Buddies program focuses on one-on-one -on -one individual relationships between people with developmental disabilities and IDD. And um, in, in the case of Southeastern Michigan, University of Michigan, and several of the area high schools have programs. Um, there has been, I think there's like 30 chapters in the state of Michigan, I, but there's no Michigan office oh, really? for Best yeah. Buddies. And there has been, in the last six to eight months, quite a fundraising effort. And I'm very happy to report that they were able to raise the million dollars that they need, the quarter million dollars, sorry, okay. that they needed to raise to establish a um, Michigan office. And it will be based in Ann Arbor. Oh, I'm good. going to an event on Saturday morning um, that is going to recognize some of the leadership of some of the volunteers. And um, I hope to have be able to bring back some information about when the office will be open and where it will be. But we, we are now on the map with regard to Best Buddies, the international organization. There will be a state office in Ann Arbor. Oh, so that's that, great news. Yeah, that is great news, Sally. And thank you um, for the work that you're doing as a liaison for that. And hopefully, as they continue to build and move forward, uh, we'll we can have them more involved yeah. with the commission. That'd be awesome. Definitely. All right. Uh, one final piece um, for me, just wanted to let you guys know, and I will say this at the March meeting, I just found out about the date uh, for the University of Michigan annual Army-Navy wheelchair basketball game. Uh, that will be March 30th, and of course, we are a bit uh, ahead of ourselves, uh, but just wanted to put that out there, and we'll announce that uh, again next month as well with more information. All righty. Uh, that is it for me, and let's see. Uh, now we have uh, the Partners in Access Committee. Allison uh, Stroud could not be with us, um, and let's see. It would I be don't, me. It I would don't be me that would on the. What's Kathleen's that? Not, Kathleen's not here either, is she? Um, no. Nope. Nope. There. Well, not, so we we didn't have a meeting. So oh, you oh you did not. No, we did we did not meet. Okay. All right. So nothing to report at this time. Nothing. No problem. Nothing. All right. OK. Uh, next is actually Larry Keeler with recruiting activity. Yeah, that would be me. Um, apparently, a commissioner got by. I didn't realize that. Because um, I, I usually stop in and, and check before I come down here. No new applications as of yet, uh, except mine. I just re redid mine. So if uh, it goes through, you're going to have to put up with me for another three years. But the, uh, the number to call, the best number to call is 794-6161. Is, is and, and talk to the mayor's office. And uh, an application can be made available to you. And I think there's another, uh, there's also a link on the uh, Ann Arbor City website, which I forget their website, a2.gov. But um, I think there's a more specific one. Anyway, I think uh, if you guys feel like, if anyone feels like applying, they can, they can do that. I just heard uh, that your application might take a minute to get in, but, uh, 
apply anyway. I think we're pretty much full, but apply anyway, because you never know. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. All right, next is the Transportation Committee uh, with the update with Mr. Tim Hall. Good afternoon, yeah. Tim. At the last meeting, they talked about uh, uh, the uh, street resurfacing projects for the upcoming for this year and other uh, related projects like they're like looking at uh, adding in some bike lanes and reconfiguring some of the streets a little bit as far as lanes and uh, just also talked about the overall transport city transportation plan update had a little presentation on that that they've uh, begun talking about that and uh, yeah, aside from that, it was basically we talked about our annual report and uh, our work plan for this year and also uh, had our chair elections in which the current chair and vice chair were reelected and uh, not much else beyond that. A couple other informational items. All right. Well, thank you, Tim. Oh, Tim. Larry, I'm so sorry about that. Go no, ahead, sir. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not on the agenda, but I was doing the micro mobility stuff. The, yeah. The micro, -mobility, micro mobility committee, and I, I did miss that meeting again because I, I, I got called off to federal court. It, I didn't do anything, but I had to be there. And so I, 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 much, I, I will definitely attend the uh, March 11th meeting and let okay. you know what's going on with the micro mobility, the scooters and the golf carts and that sort of thing. That's what we're doing. Yeah. So. I guess I had a question perhaps for Tim or um, anyone else who can speak to the, um, the plague, uh, the scourge of the bird scooters that has descended upon our community. Um, is that an item that the Transportation Commission is yeah, prepared to deal with? Yeah, that's what the Micromobility Committee is about. It's about that and other s small, yeah, yeah, Larry. Yeah, we're the Micromobility uh, committee from uh, as, as part of the transportation committee and I, I, I took that because Tim probably had his hands full over there and I thought somebody from the Commission ought to be on it and so did the Commission and uh, we're, we're currently uh, trying to trying to uh, put together a city ordinance to control the uh, to control those things and at one point there was some discussion of due diligence about um, to what extent the bird corporation or whoever might own those uh, scooters, whether they offer an accessible version of said mobility device. Did, did we ever get any? Yeah, did we get? I think that it? was one of the items of discussion for the micro mobility uh, committee in their statement of values, which they approved, I think, at the last Transportation yeah. Commission meeting. They did. I'll have to look at it again and, and bring in the specifics. But I do have the I do have the notes from that meeting, and I do have that that thing. But I'm I'm sorry, I haven't committed to memory yet. Thank you. I, I apologize because I was absent from the last meeting where this might have been discussed. No, no, you're good. No, but it's a good question. Definitely. Thank you, Matthew. All right. Anything else for Tim, or can we move? Forward? We can move on. All right. Thank you, Tim. All right, uh, next is the UM Council for Disability Concerns meeting update uh, with Kathleen, of course. Uh, she is not here this afternoon. Um, I did not receive uh, any update from her uh, on that this week, uh, but I will reach out to her uh, and get that information, and then I can um, uh, present that. Did you have anything, Sally? Yeah, I was just going to say, in the past, um, our HR liaison has been copied on the UM CFDC minutes, okay. and sometimes they get um, distributed with our packet of information. So if we can go back to that practice, okay. Um, if you aren't on that email list, I can tell you who to contact afterward. Okay. So you'll get those monthly meeting updates, and then when our agenda goes out with our past meeting minutes, those <coughs> meeting minutes can come out as well so we can all be familiar with what's going on. Yeah, perfect. Thank you very much for that information, Sally. And uh, Corey, I'll make sure to uh, coordinate with you to make sure that that's, that happens. Thanks, Zach. Yep. All right. Uh, next, uh, are there any announcements? Do we have anything from anyone today? 
All right. No announcements. Any other new business? Anything that anyone wants to address today? You done forgot old business if there's any. Uh, actually, uh, it was uh, earlier in the agenda. <laughs> Let's see. All right. No, no new business. Uh, well, I guess, folks, that is it. We are adjourned this evening. I want to thank again uh, the wonderful students from Skyline High School for joining us. And I encourage all of you, uh, if you do have a pressing issue that you would like to address, uh, that addresses uh, and is uh, important on accessibility and, and inclusiveness, please feel free to reach out to the Ann Arbor Commission on Disability Issues. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next time.